Welcome back to 8701. So in this lecture, we talk about nuclear fusion. Um, and what we mean by fusion is the energy production by two light nuclei fusing together to produce a heavier one, which is more tightly bound. And again, we can understand this from the empirical mass formula. Okay, so the difficulty in nuclear fusion is that we now have to overcome the Coulomb barrier from the other side. So we have to bring two light nuclei together, have to overcome the Coulomb barrier in order to form this heavier, heavier and more tightly bound state. Um, you might think that you can just take a beam, two beams of protons like we do at the LHC, bombard them and um, create heavier, heavier nuclei. But the problem is that most of the nuclei will scatter elastically and will not lead to the a new bound state. So the practical way to overcome the Coulomb barrier is to by uh, creating um, uh, a confined mixture and supplying heat such that the thermal energy is enough to overcome this, the Coulomb barrier. Uh, you can estimate how much energy is needed. Uh, if you, for example, assume a Coulomb barrier of about 5 MeV, this implies temperatures of 5 times 10 to the 10 Kelvin. Okay, so that's really, really hot, right? Um, if you compare this to typical temperatures within stars, you'll find that those are only 10 to the 8 um, Kelvin. So now you ask, why does it still work? Why do we see fusion within uh, stellar medium? And the answer to this is, again, quantum tunneling. And to some degrees also the fact that when we have a, a medium of a specific temperature, the kinetic energy of um, the particle involved follows a maxwell energy distribution. So you find some particles which have enough energy to overcome the Coulomb potential, even so the mean value uh, would be below. The processes within the sun um, they are dominated by so-called proton-proton cycle or PPI cycle. And this happens then in, in a number of steps. We start with hydrogen or protons. You know, the, the core of the sun is basically a plasma, so we can uh, forget about electrons in this context. So we have two protons fusing together to a um, deuteron, which is a proton and a neutron via the weak interaction. And here you find for the first time, again, the um, uh, neutrinos being produced in the sun. Um, then you supply the deuterium again, um, and together with the proton, you are able to produce a helium. And then the helium again is being used to supply the third step in this helium three is supplied to produce helium four. So this is then the end product is a helium four here and energy. If you combine all of those three steps, you find that you start with four protons, you produce helium-4, uh, positrons, neutrinos, photons, and energy. Um, in fact, as I was just saying, this all happens within a hot plasma. Um, the uh, positrons are basically annihilated with electrons, which are uh, part of the plasma, uh, adding another MeV of energy to this. All right, this is one and the dominant energy um, production mechanism within the sun, but it's not, it's not the only one. Also quite interesting is the so-called carbon cycle. It's contributing about 3% to the sun, sun's energy output. So here, um, carbon basically uh, works as a catalyst. So you have a carbon and again, a proton producing nitrogen. The nitrogen produces carbon-13, carbon-13 together with a proton, nitrogen 14, nitrogen 14 with the proton, oxygen 15, and oxygen 15, nitrogen 15, and then last but not least, nitrogen 15 together with the proton produces carbon 12 again, and helium. So you see that the carbon 12 is the catalyst here, which is used to produce helium and energy. So if you produce this cycle, if you produce, combine this cycle, you find that again from four protons or four, four hydrogen 
atoms, you produce helium, uh, positrons again, neutrinos, three photons, and energy. Very similar, it's still visible to this combined chain, with the exception that there is one additional photon. And again, here, the positrons supply additional energy and they're annihilate with electrons. Great, so we have seen that we do two things. We create heavier forms of matter starting from hydrogen and we produce energy. And so this is the energy production mechanism within the sun. This is nice. Um, you know, you produce, you know, you start with hydrogen or deuterium. Those are two elements which are very abundant and you produce energy. So the question comes up whether or not you can actually use this on Earth uh, in a controlled environment in order to produce energy and solve many of the, of the ongoing issues we have on this planet. There are several efforts on the way, and this goes back all the way to the 50s of the last century. Um, the most prominent one currently is the so-called ITER project, uh, which is an international collaboration and a project where one tries to build a fusion re reactor um, in France. Um, I can already tell you that the, uh, the next stage for this is in about five years uh, to complete uh, the project or complete the production of construction of the project and produce energy for the first time with this project in this controlled environment. It will take another 10, 15 years on this roadmap of research in order to produce or be able to produce uh, nuclear power reactors, nuclear fusion power reactors, which can be used in some sort of commercial way. There's a few other interesting projects which um, use different magnet technologies, which might um, uh, have a more faster pathway to success. But coming back to the, to the story here, so you could start with, um, with protons again in a proton-proton reaction, but it turns out that this is a rather slow process and not very promising for a um, controlled reaction. But deuterium or tritium are also very promising. Note that, you know, for deuterium here, we have to overcome the same Coulomb barrier, right? The charges are charges involved are the very same, but the cross sections are higher, and therefore uh, the likelihood for the process to occur is higher, and therefore um, this can this can happen much faster. Um, deuterium is again, as I was saying before, very abundant. You can just extract this from water. Tritium is a little bit more difficult to deal with, um, to produce and to control, and because it's radioactive and has some some really not so good features. So this is a model picture of ITER. Again, uh, this is an international project. Um, it has a, a rather re bad reputation these days. It's, it's uh, by far the most expensive scientific endeavor. Um, <clears throat> but again, I mean, I think this is an investment into the future of this planet and, uh, and hopefully will succeed in the next years with this project and in the long run with having uh, nuclear fission, a fusion available, sorry, nuclear fusion available for energy creation. What you see here is um, the, the key feature of this reactor is um, uh, uh, toroidal magnets which confine the plasma and also electric fields are used in order to heat the plasma up first. So you have to provide heat to a point that, you know, the heat being produced in the fusion process is sufficient to self-sustain. And so that, you know, confining the plasma and, 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 and providing enough energy uh, and the radiation in this and so on, this is all very difficult, difficult problems to solve. 